Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Something new, something novel, something beneficial is always good, no matter what field you're in. And healthcare, I think, is no exception. Think about all the major advances that there have been in the field of medicine in the past few years. Vaccines, the heart-lung machine, organ transplants, mapping of the human genome, MRI scans, CT scans, and most of this actually happened in my lifetime. No, well, not all of it. <laughs> now, you know, somebody had to invent all of that, and none of it came without a lot of work, ingenuity, and, and some smarts, really. Well, now Mayo Clinic is here to help. The Life Sciences Incubator in Jacksonville, Florida, facilitates the advancement of new ideas and products from the research lab through product development and into the clinic. The incubator helps design, nurture, and accelerate promising healthcare and life science companies that are focused on improving patient care. On the phone from Jacksonville, Florida, to tell us more about it, is the director of the Mayo Clinic Bio Incubator, Mr. Vic Noel. Welcome to the program. Thank you. How are you today? Good. Well, good, Vic, and thanks so much for uh, joining us. So uh, let's start with, give us a quick introduction to the Life Science Incubator. What are, what are you, we really talking about? Sure. So the incubator is really a place that teaches the business process uh, to people who may not be business trained. So we work with uh, innovators and inventors uh, who are mainly working in the scientific, clinical, engineering fields. And we teach them how to bring their ideas, new products, technologies to market. And is this, uh, have you started doing this? Is the incubator open? Uh, no, the incubator actually is uh, still under construction. It's nearly completed. It's due to be turned over to us at the end of May. So we're hoping sometime between the 20th and the 30th of May we'll be able to move into the building and start the program. Do you have some candidates already ready to go? Yes, we do. I've, I've been pleasantly surprised while we've been waiting for the facility to be done. We've been working hard on the program, and uh, we actually have a list of somewhere between 25 and 30 projects that have been brought to us already uh, and are ready for vetting. So I'm actually in the process of uh, hiring the staff. We're in the final phases of that, and we hope to have those folks in place by the end of May. Uh, and the first job that we will have is to start to work through that list of 25 or 30 potential projects to see what we can't get activated quickly. How do you teach a doctor or a researcher, a <laughs> medical mind person to become a business person? Think <laughs> like a businessman. Well, actually, what we, what we start with is something called Idea Lab. And, and really, in the Idea Lab, what we're trying to do is get whatever they have uh, from their heads onto a piece of paper. So typically, when folks come to us, they'll just have an idea or they'll have a challenge or an opportunity that they're thinking about. In some cases, they may have a, a crude product prototype uh, that they're working with. And so in Idea Lab, what we're trying to do is to identify the problem that they're trying to solve, um, understand what their solution is, and then start to quickly move uh, the idea onto paper, from paper into prototype, and then from prototype into business model. So as we're doing that, what we're doing is we're kind of teaching them um, all the things, the fundamental things that they need to understand in order to build that business model. Things like assessing the market and looking at competitive dynamics and uh, actually doing the engineering on whatever their product or, or their technology is, the customer validation. Uh, and typically how we do that is through a combination of uh, academic education um, that is supplemented with deep dives that, uh, that are taught by subject matter experts that we bring into the incubator. And it's very important in our program to have student engagement as well. So typically what we'll do is bring in uh, MBA students, engineering students from outside uh, to help us to work on those projects as we're activating them. And, and how many people work at your facility, and, and how do you hire the people? I mean, it sounds like you need experts in, in a diverse number of fields. Sure. So the, the core staff, when we open, will be five people. It'll be myself. I'll have a project portfolio manager. I'll have an operations manager who basically manages the space itself. We'll have a marketing person. Uh, and then we're connected to other Mayo Clinic resources as well. So we're connected very closely to the Office of Entrepreneurship. So that director will be located uh, in the incubator. Um, we have a liaison to Mayo Clinic Ventures who will be working with us and a liaison to the business development team. Uh, so in addition to that core team, 
what I've been doing over the last several months is to build an external network uh, of service providers that will help us as we're activating these projects as well. So people who have uh, expertise in, in legal, accounting, finance, marketing, regulatory, IT, uh, all of those fundamentals that uh, will be needed to develop a project to hopefully uh, eventually create a business. Uh, those resources that aren't really resident on the Mayo Clinic campus uh, that we could easily pull in and out. Uh, mm -hmm. We've also found um, a, a fair number of re retired professionals in the Jacksonville mm -hmm. area who are interested in being mentors to some of these teams. And what I'm finding is that their industry networks are phenomenal. Uh, so our plan is to use that, uh, that network of, of mentors as well to help us. When this, when this happens, then does the idea become a Mayo Clinic's idea, or does it become the person who thought of its idea, or is it co-owned? That's a great question. So one of the very first things that we do when people will come to the incubator is to, if they've got a great idea, is to ask them if they've disclosed. So if they're Mayo employees, the first thing that we want them to do is to disclose that idea to Mayo Clinic Ventures so that the intellectual property can be properly protected. Um, but we will also be working with groups that are external to Mayo, and they will typically come in with their own intellectual property. So is there an upfront cost to use your facility and your expertise, or do you get royalties if, so, if they create a business out of this? Or how, how does the, the, the expenses work and the costs work? Right. So it, the, the services are free to Mayo Clinic uh, employees. So again, I mean, they'll have already uh, disclosed to Mayo Clinic Ventures, and if we find that they have something that's commercially viable, um, whenever they actually capture value for whatever it is, a product or a technology or a business, Mayo Clinic Ventures will automatically be participating in that. So there's no fee to, to employees to, to use the service. For those that are external, uh, they will have to have some kind of an agreement in place with Mayo Clinic. So not only will, will their work need to be aligned with Mayo Mission, they'll have to have uh, either a a collaborative research agreement or a clinical trial agreement or a know-how agreement that allows them to uh, to access the services. And um, in addition to that, we'll be charging uh, rent uh, for, uh, for the space. We'll be charging fees for the services. Um, so that's how we intend to capture value for externals. So you have 25 or 30 candidates. Who's going to pick? <laughs> That's a great question. So we do have an advisory team that, that um, we've put together. For now, they're mostly um, senior-level Mayo employees, but as we grow the incubator, we'll supplement that with some of these external partners as well. All right, Life Science Incubator. We've been talking with the director of the Mayo Clinic Bio Incubator, Mr. Vic Knoll from Jacksonville, Florida. Mr. Knoll, thanks so much for being with us, and, and all the best. Thank you. I appreciate it.